Hi, Emily. Yeah, there's no audio yet. Um, let me know if you can hear my voice. <laughs> okay, cool. Great. Um, yeah, we'll give, give everybody probably another, you know, probably a minute or two past um, 11 o'clock PST, just so everybody can trickle in. Uh, hi, everyone. So it is the top of the hour, so we can go ahead and start. Um, we can do some introductions first, and then we'll go over everything. So welcome, everybody. Today is the IT Asset Management webinar, focusing on IT Asset Management and HR, specifically the onboarding and offboarding process. My name is Annie Sue. I'm an IT Asset Management Solution Consultant here at ServiceNow. And then demoing with me today will be Claire. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Claire Russell. I'm an employee workflow solution consultant here at ServiceNow. So I focus in on our employee experience offering. Um, and today I'll be covering our onboarding and offboarding module of that. So very um, nice to meet you all and excited to uh, share what we have prepared for you today. Great. Thanks, Claire. Um, and then, oh, I guess Mika, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Annie. So hi everyone, my name is Mika Anderson. I'm also an IT asset management solution consultant, counterpart with Annie, um, also a certified system administrator, and hopefully I'll be able to answer any of your questions and moderating the chat as we follow along with Annie and Claire. Thanks. So great thing about uh, the chat. Um, so some housekeeping items, of course, right? Up, we have our safe harbor notice up for any forward looking statements. Uh, and then additionally, if you have any questions, please do use the Q&A function. Mika will be handling those questions as they come through. And then we may pause throughout to take some of the questions live. And there will also be time at the end to take some of the questions. Um, in addition, this session is recorded. So afterwards, you will be able to access both the recording as well as the deck. All right. So with that being said, uh, we're going to go over the agenda for today. So. More or less, the first 10 minutes will be spent 
on going over the overview. So very high level, what is IT asset management? Whoops, it looks like we turn this on make sure both for the hardware and as well as the software side. And then Claire will go ahead and do an overview of the employee experience. And then we're going to jump into our live demo where Claire and I are gonna pass it back and forth and we're gonna follow a couple personas through their journey onboarding as well as offboarding. And then finally time at the end for Q&A. So jumping right into it, right? When we're looking at IT asset management as a whole, it's really made up of both hardware as well as software asset management. And the main goals of IT asset management is reducing risk, saving money and planning better. If we start over here on the left, we can see the full end-to-end -end life cycle of a piece of hardware within your organization from request, source, receive, all the way to disposal, right? Today, we're gonna to focus on two portions. One is going to be um, the request sourcing and receiving. And then at the end is the retiring or disposing or reclaiming. And that's because we're focusing on that employing onboarding and offboarding story. Similarly, on the software side, right, the entire life cycle for software. So request all the way to retire, um, making sure that the employee has the right software as they're starting, making sure we reclaim those licenses as they're leaving, so we're not leaving any money on the table. And then across both of these, right, making sure that our asset managers or our IT folks have a great experience as they're managing these different moving pieces. To you, Claire. Yeah, so today we're going to be covering our employee workflow solution. Uh, our um, enterprise onboarding and transition fits right within our HR service delivery. But what that means is removing the complexities for your employees. So seeing how they can have an enterprise onboarding experience. Um, typically, we're seeing a lot of our customers have onboarding built out within your HR system. Um, so your core HRIS, um, but what that fails to do is pick up the other pieces from other departments. So whether uh, tasks are being assigned from IT or facilities or legal, what we um, seek to do is give that unified experience for the employees so that they are having one centralized onboarding experience, removing those complexities um, and ultimately having a productive onboarding and offboarding experience so that they're ready for day one. Um, and as they leave your company, everything um, that they need is taken care of before they leave um, and they're not walking out the door with their computer. Next slide, Annie. Yeah, so this is just an example and I'm sure many of you can reflect um, on what you're doing throughout your onboarding experience, but what we're covering today will be that triggering event and how it fits into um, the entire employee's life cycle of onboarding um, all the way to that they are uh, all the way um, until their day one. So we'll see uh, how parties are having visibility, your employee is completing tasks, um, and all of this is out of the box. So not um, building from scratch, this is going to be out of the box um, to assist with your teams um, in your onboarding experience. Next slide, Annie. Thank you, Claire. So she covered the onboarding portion and then, right, the uh, mirror of onboarding is offboarding, right? So employee departs the company all the way over here on the left. That is Claire's area of expertise. This is where, right, the hiring manager might put in a request for an employee separation, voluntary or not, and so on. And then on the back end, on the asset offboarding side, right? Hardware asset management is looking at reclaiming that device and then evaluating it, deciding if it's uh, supposed to go for repair, if it's ready for re redeployment, if it's supposed to be disposed, or if it's time to retire it. And then for the software asset management piece, right, identifying the pieces of software that are both assigned to that employee as well as located on that hardware. We can go ahead and reclaim those licenses both from the hardware as well as deprovision those SaaS licenses and whatnot. And we're really looking to automate the request, reclamation, evaluation, and removal of hardware and software, so that entire asset reclamation experience. All right. Um, with that being said, I think we can hop right into our demo. Uh, Claire, do you want to take over screen share? Yeah, I'm going to steal screen share right now. And I'll get our slides pulled up. And can I get a confirmation that you can see my screen, Annie? 
Yep, I can see it. Awesome. So we are going to cover two perspectives today. First, we'll go through onboarding and then um, the flip side, we will walk through offboarding. So again, if there are any questions throughout our presentation today, um, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll answer them uh, as we go through. Um, I want this to be as interactive as possible but we are going to cover the entire onboarding journey. So Annie and I will take turns going through it, but essentially I will be covering Nick, our new hires experience, how he's able to get his, um, order his computer before day one, having that enterprise experience. We'll then see our hiring manager's perspective, how Maria is able to have visibility into those tasks that are being assigned to her, either from HR, most importantly, IT, um, but she has direct insight into where her employee is at in this journey without having to um, ask IT, ask other departments um, if those tasks are being completed. Annie will pick up on Casey, um, who will be working on getting um, our new hire ready for day one. And then last, we'll look through Anna and how she's able to design this process. So that is really the out of the box um, capabilities, but we'll see how she's able to have um, direct insight into creating those tasks that are being assigned to the employee. So for Nick, our new hire and our first um, persona that we'll meet today, he has just accepted his offer. So upon that start date um, or that effective date being entered into your core system of records, so whether that be ADP or Workday, Oracle HCM, um, depending on your core system and your process, it has been entered in the system and that's going to trigger out Nick's um, steps for completing his onboarding process. Now, Nick, like many of us, is going to work through his onboarding process on his mobile phone. But as we can see through these instructions, he's able to do so on either his mobile app or his desktop, just depending on his comfort level. We want to meet employees in the ways that they'd like to work. So for us and for many employees, that means working on our mobile phone. But if he's more comfortable, he can also do this on his desktop. Now I'll get that pulled up for us. And Nick has read through these instructions and he's going to begin his onboarding experience. Now, as he enters the mobile app, he can see content that is being pushed to him. This is based on who he is and where he sits in the organization. So for an employee working in one specific state, um, he might have state information, local office updates. Um, for an employee working in a different role, he might need a computer for day one, um, but for those that don't, he would not see this um, content such as getting his uh, ordering a laptop. So really designing that employee's experience and having that personalized content, getting him excited and communicating what he needs to know before day one. Now, as he comes in, Nick can oversee and see all of the tasks that have been assigned to him um, uh, and when he needs to complete them by. So we can see all of the tasks that are for day one, but as we know, onboarding can um, go up to 90 days, getting your employee acquainted um, and up to speed with all of the information they know. Now, Nick is excited to begin working on all of his onboarding tasks and he can see what he has to complete as well as when he needs to complete them by. Um, if Nick were to leave the app, though, he had to run to the grocery store, he um, has to take care of his family, he would be able to still come back into the app. So he's able to complete this at his leisure. He just knows um, that he should get everything done before day one so he can be productive. Now, as we can see, all of Nick's tasks are being assigned from a variety of departments. So again, thinking back to your HR onboarding, we can surface those tasks um, in here as well. We're not seeking to replace that. We are seeking to enhance that experience and remove the complexity. So Nick isn't having to go into a variety of systems. He isn't having to figure out, okay, what do I need to complete for my IT team, my facilities team, my legal team? Everything will be surfaced in one area for him. Now he can see that he needs to select his equipment and he's very excited about this. Um, he wants to be ready for day one. And if we think back to our own onboarding experience, having a computer on day one uh, is very important to getting the job done. So Nick is able to begin the selection of his equipment. He's guided through this process easily. 
um, and is able to complete it almost like a shopping experience. So in the background, you would determine what assets um, and what types of laptops Nick um, is able to select. So he isn't selecting anything that he wouldn't be pre-approved for already. So we'll say he wants a MacBook. Um, and in the background, you can also bundle assets that will be associated with this. So here we can see that not only is Nick going to select a computer, um, but he also can see that he needs an HDMI, a wireless mouse, and a keyboard, ensuring that Nick is ready for day one. He's not going to get to um, his first day and not have all of the equipment he needs. So removing some of the, uh, that back and forth you might have with IT teams, IT teams submitting a request every time uh, he gets there day one, he realizes he needs all these things that might be three requests. Um, so just ensuring that he's all productive, ready to go, we'll select it and he's going to order and check out. Now we'll follow along with this request, but for Nick, it's all taken care of. He's ready to start. He's going to have his computer um, ordered for him. And he's able, he's even able to track that request as well and see the status. You can have a notification sent to him with that shipping information. So Nick knows that as he comes in, he's able to complete those tasks and be productive for day one. Um, having that positive experience and ensuring that he's all set to go. So for our next perspective, Nick has completed some of his tasks. He knows he can go back and complete them um, as needed, but we'll then transition to our hiring manager, Maria. So Maria cares about seeing her team. She is a hiring manager, so she wants to check in on Nick's onboarding experience and ensure that he's all ready to go on day one so that he's having a positive experience and as productive as possible. As we come into our employee center, this is Maria's one start area to get resources um, and support from her organization. Now in the past, she might've had to go to a variety of service portals, such as an, a portal for HR versus IT, but with the enhancements in Rome, this is our unified employee center. So she needs to just go to one area um, in order to get that support, creating that consistent experience for her. Within the employee center, it's been designed for that employee's experience and providing her that consumer-like approach. So she's able to search across your organization and content um, using a, glo a global search, which will almost act like a Google search. She's also able to see things such as active items, so things she needs to take action on. Again, surfacing her up anything that she might need to be aware of. Any approvals, we can see that Nick has requested those four items, so we'll go ahead and approve that for him so that he's ready to go, as well as any popular topics or recommendations. Now, in the background, AI is pushing these up to her um, in order to be most helpful for her, so what is going to be helpful as her role as a manager, so that may look different um, depending on the time of year any quick links or apps that she's also using in her day-to-day. -day. Again, just acting as a centralized location for her to get resources um, so she's not having to navigate around and figure where to go. Maria is a manager though, and she wants to take a look at her hiring or her team's status. So within her manager center, Maria is able to have a high level oversight into her team with some of these analytics directing her attention. Um, and one of the things that catches her eye though is this new hire's experience. So she can see that Nick has some tasks that he needs to complete. Um, so we'll take a look and see um, what still needs to be done. Now, Maria is able to see that Nick is our new hire when he's starting, again, pulling in from your core information, um, even what his position location is, as well as who in HR has been assigned this task. Now, this is going to give Maria that direct visibility into if I have a question, who am I going to ask um, to give her more of that personalized approach? Maria can see at a high level all of the tasks that she needs to complete on behalf of Nick. So do I need to select cloud accounts for him to um, be ready for day one? So as we come in, again, Maria is able to select access to these accounts. She knows that these are the ones that he will typically be using. This can be done um, 
and be automated. Um, but for Maria, her company has set it up that she does still need to select these and she's able to order them. And we'll see later uh, where that will surface. Maria also wants to ensure that Nick is completing his tasks. So she's able to have direct visibility into his tasks. And as we see, Nick still has nine tasks that he needs to complete. Um, so she's able to remind him on those tasks as well. Last, Maria is able to have visibility into the tasks that have been assigned from IT and where IT is at in the process. Maria really enjoys this because she's not going to have to email back and forth, check with IT, see if his email account is being opened, is he being added to Active Directory. All of these are done automatically. The request has been sent to IT automatically in the back end. Maria is not having to fill out those manager forms that we are seeing or email IT, everything is being done um, in the background with, um, but giving her visibility into the steps and what is being completed. So she knows her new hire is going to be ready on day one. So we've seen how our manager Maria is able to have that direct insight. She can see where IT is at in the process, but again, thinking of that enterprise level experience, this can expand to different departments as you grow. So assigning tasks to legal, finance, um, giving that enterprise level experience so Maria knows her employee will be ready for day one and most importantly alleviating some of that burden on your teams who would be responding to those questions. Now I'm going to transition to Casey and Annie's going to pick up um, with our demo. Great, thanks so much Claire. Uh, let me know when you can see my screen. Yep, Annie, we can see. Great. Right, so Claire just walked us through what it looks like from the new hire as well as the new hires manager side. Now we're going to walk through as Casey Kuhn and Casey is our asset manager here at this organization. I'm currently on the hardware asset overview workspace as Casey oftentimes starts her day here. Right, since we're taking a look at onboarding, we could go to asset requests, and here we can see all the requests within the organization. It's not necessarily coming from onboarding, but that's what we're focusing on today. And there's actually this one for Susan Gomez opened by April Tudor. So I've, go, I've gone ahead and actually saved a separate view where we can find this request because Casey could either start her day at the workspace or this report that just pulls in specifically onboarding related requests. So for Casey, this looks just like any other request. It's just that the source of it is coming from onboarding. And for here, we can see for Susan Gomez, there's four requested items, both the Apple MacBook Pro 15 inch, which is a piece of hardware, as well as software licensing. If I drill down into one of these, right, we can see each step that's needed for um, procuring these particular items for Susan. I'm gonna hop over to the catalog tasks and then click this source task and here I can source this request. As you can see, it pulls both the hardware as well as the software pieces into one source request page. And I can go ahead and I'm gonna start allocating some of these licenses over to Susan. As you can see for Casey, Casey never needed to be notified by uh, Susan's actual manager. All she needed to do was log into the screen that she logs into every day. And then from there can start taking actions on the requests that are needed for this day. I'm gonna go ahead and directly purchase the MacBook from the vendor and then drop it off at our central location where we go ahead and dispatch all of the laptops to our employees and then one more license. Mm -hmm. Once I've gone ahead and submitted that request, right, we can see that, the, that this particular step is now closed complete. And then we can see for the software asset lines that these have now been fulfilled and the Apple MacBook Pro 15 inch has been ordered. Right? Once it has been ordered, it will follow the, uh, we can see the purchase order 
that is tied to it. And then it will follow the typical procuring um, process. So between purchasing from the vendor and then receiving it and then deploying it to Susan. So one thing to keep in mind here is that as Casey is going through and completing these tasks, actually for somebody like Able Tutor in this case, or in Claire's earlier case, it was Manager Maria, they will be able to see updates being made to their request for their new hires. So that removes a lot of the conversation back and forth that typically happens within organizations between HR and IT, right? Phone calls, emails, and so on, and new hires being kept in the dark, not sure when they can start, not sure when they're getting their equipment. All right. Um, and then with that, Claire, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Annie. Stealing screen share. Okay, so for our final onboarding perspective, we are going to look at Anna, and she is essentially our admin. So designing this whole experience, um, and we'll look at some of the automation and the behind the scenes into the, when those tasks are going out, who's assigning those tasks, um, and some of the capabilities around that. So Anna, our admin here, can see our managed lifecycle event for onboarding. So this essentially is those out of the box capabilities, um, but you would be able to design this onboarding experience. So when those tasks are going out and to whom they are for. So here we can see that within his pre-hire tasks, we can see those um, either notifications, requests, um, catalog items, tasks for different departments. I um, mean, we're able to see when they're going out and again, who is completing them. Now, for our IT team today, um, we're able to filter this out as well. So we can see who is the owning group um, and remove some of that uh, those HR tasks. Now, as you come in, IT will be only in control of IT's tasks and HR is control of HR's. So just ensuring that um, they're assigning their tasks and working on them and designing that onboarding experience. But essentially, this is where you can have that, co -collab um, that collaboration between those two teams to design this enterprise onboarding experience. Now, as we filter out, we can see all of the tasks for those pre-boarding. Again, these are being, these are uh, triggered by workflows, you can have them be conditional as well. So once that new hire date um, has been triggered and our new hire is working through their onboarding experience, we can see that with that trigger, um, equipment is going out, setting up that email, setting up other things like a voicemail. As you go in and you design your onboarding experience to get feedback, you can add activities as needed and you can design these onboarding experience per employee too. So um, for different roles, for different locations. Um, they're going to have a different onboarding experience. And so this is where you're able to uh, design that for your employee. Now, for those employees that um, might fail, uh, might not become an employee at your organization, a lot of the times we get the question, uh, what happens with this automation? All of these are being triggered. You're removing a lot of manu manual processes. What, happen if the, what happens if the employee is no longer going to work at your organization? Well, we do have a rescind capability. So when this is triggered, everything will essentially be undone. So making sure that um, your systems aren't being provisioned to employees that aren't working there, making sure that assets aren't being prepared and making sure that the desk and phone setup isn't um, being uh, set up for the employees. So again, you have those checks to ensure that all of this is being automated, removing some of that burden off of your teams during this onboarding process. But if something were to happen, you can remove that um, for your employee. Um, so you're up to compliance if an audit were to occur. Now, as we think about our offboarding experience, um, I'll get this loaded for us, but essentially um, you can create those different life cycle events. And these are out of the box for your different ex uh, transfers offboarding as well. So within our offboarding experience that we'll now cover, uh, it would act the same way. Um, and once this loads, let me get this loaded for us. But um, again, these are out of the box. And so you can design that too 
for things such as transfers, offboarding experience to have that automation and ensure that your tasks are being assigned to your IT teams um, and your other teams as you're working through this process. So for Anna, she's able to design and have that um, organizational efficiency with that um, managed lifecycle builder but again, has the ability to rescind some of that if something were to happen. Now we're going to cover our offboarding experience today and how this is going to be triggered for our employees experience. And we're going to uh, meet our manager, Maria. So Maria, uh, will be the triggering event of our offboarding experience. Many times our employees tell our managers and they're the first person that finds out about this process. So for Maria, she's going to go back into her employee center and she has not worked through this process before. So with the re resources that have been prepared to her by her teams, she's able to search um, for a voluntary um, a voluntary leave. So we'll keyword search this for her. And she's able to see all of the documentation and resources that have been prepared to her by, by a voluntary separation. We obviously support involuntary separations as well. That would look a little different in terms of timing. Um, but Maria's uh, employee has had a positive experience. They're just leaving um, with uh, to go to a new company. So if she had any questions, she would be able to read into these knowledge articles, but Maria wants to kick off this process. As she fills out, she is able to choose a specific employee that is going to be offboarded and then the effective date of the, date of the departure. Many times, um, and from what we've seen with customers, HR is the first person to be notified. Um, and then IT is notified a little bit later um, and almost has a fire drill for their department. So this is just ensuring that the second the manager knows, they are updating the core HCM that will get this notice. And then with the reason why for reporting capabilities. And as she submits this off, those triggers of tasks um, will be sent off for the employee um, uh, for the employee to uh, have those tasks assigned to them and for the IT team to begin this offboarding process. So we've seen how Maria is able to trigger this catalog event or this action, um, ensuring those tasks are being assigned. And I will now transition back to Annie um, to, do, to pick up with Casey. Thanks, Claire. I'm gonna take screen share. Just let me know when you can see it. Yep, we can see. Great, thank you. All right, so back to Casey. Um, the piece that Clara was just talking about, right, that offboarding request, I kind of wanted to show a little bit of what it looks like on the backside, especially or specifically for the asset reclamation portion. What's actually happening is that within this asset lifecycle, there is one of the options to reclaim asset. And here, depending on who it's requested by, who it's requested for, if it's coming from uh, the reason being an employee separation, and then the assets, the date, the method, shipping, pickup, or drop off, as well as any particular notes, right? So that's what's happening in the back end to kick off this particular workflow. Now for Casey, I can actually go and look at the offboarding requests that are there for me. And I have one for Ali Pumphrey. I can go ahead and then click into this asset reclamation request. And I guess something to point out for others who have seen ServiceNow before, asset reclamation as part of um, IT asset management at ServiceNow is something that is new as part of the San Diego release. So for the asset reclamation request, we can see there's two items that are created, one from the hardware side and then one from the software side. If we look at the stages, right, receiving, evaluation, and then completing. We can actually click into this hardware asset reclamation line and then drill down into this task. And here is where we would put relevant information, such as the carrier, the tracking number, the shift date, uh, which stock room it should be sent to, as well as a description helping out anybody who's looking at this particular asset task. Once it has been shipped, right, I'm gonna hop back over. Once it has been shipped, 
and then we can mark it as received, we're going to start evaluating it. So we're evaluating based to see if it's available for redeployment, right? Meaning that it still has life left and it's still usable, then we should make the most out of our inventory and then reassign that laptop to somebody else or at least put it back into the available inventory. Sometimes that's not the case, right? The laptop might be at end of life or it's not in usable condition. If those are the cases, either we're going to send it off for disposal or send it back to a vendor for maintenance and repairs. Depending on what our evaluation result is, actually each one of those decisions can trigger the corresponding workflow to kick off each of those requests, right? Whether it's an RMA, a disposal, or um, back to inventory. So once we've received that piece of hardware back from Ali, we're also going to scrape the software from it, right? So I can click into the software asset reclamation line and we can see a couple different reclamation tasks. There's revoking the user license allocations and that's just helping us maintain good um, allocation best practice data keeping within our platform. And then there's revoking single sign-on access, revoking SAP access, and then revoking user subscriptions. So currently I have mine set up to be manual reclamation, but if you have integrations built with those single sign-on vendors or those SaaS subscription vendors, you can definitely automate those revocations. You can have the task be kicked off from within ServiceNow and then go into those SaaS vendors and deprovision those subscriptions. If I take a little bit of a deeper look into the subscription section, here we can see some examples such as Coupa, Adobe Systems, and so on. I can even go ahead and reclaim them from here if I'm doing it manually. Uh, sometimes, right, our customers might have a mix of SaaS vendors, some of which they have integrations for, and then some of which they don't have. So some will be manually reclaimed, and then some of them will be automatically reclaimed. So once I can go, once I go ahead and remove all of these licenses for Ali, I can go ahead and close this task, right? What Casey was able to do was, again, just be notified from somebody on the HR side, but not having that back and forth communication between. And then also, right, for the asset management portion, this is considering security. We're making sure nobody walks off with a laptop that they're not supposed to. We're reclaiming those accesses to the system to so make sure that there's no access granted once they leave the organization. And then also we're optimizing our software asset management as well as hot hardware asset management spend, right? If we can reuse that laptop, then we want to put it back in, into inventory and then deploy it to the next employee. And then for software, if somebody is no longer with the company and no longer using any of those licenses, we can reclaim and then reassign it to somebody without having to purchase new or additional licenses. Right. So that does take me to the end. Um, Claire, was there anything else or are we good for wrap up? We are good to take questions and for wrap up. All right. Thank you. I'm going to pull my deck back up. Mm -hmm. Can you see the slide? Yes. Great, so there's some time for q and I think I saw just a couple come in and actually it looks like Mika answered most of them, but I guess we can do a quick recap of what we saw today, right? So um, on the asset management portion, we saw both for onboarding and offboarding, one place for Casey to complete all of these. She never had to leave the platform. She saw exactly what she was supposed to see and the day-to-day -day tasks for her, regardless of if it was coming from onboarding or offboarding or just a generic asset request, right? It never looked that different and all the movements felt familiar. And then Claire, did you want to recap your section? Yeah, so we've seen how uh, regardless of the perspective of the employee or the manager, you're able to have that enterprise level experience. So assigning tasks, making sure that there's visibility across your organization so that IT is in the loop, um, tasks are being assigned with automation and with everything today that we've seen, it is out of the box to provide that ease of use um, and adoption for your organization. Thank you. Uh, so I guess we can take some questions. I see some in Q&A right now. Um, one from Michael Lurch, it says, how deeply does this integrate with a new lifecycle model in CSDM 4.0?
I'm not sure about this one because I haven't uh, read into this yet. I don't know, Claire, have you heard anything? If not, we can always follow up. I think we can send that as a follow up. Okay, cool. And then the other one from Carol is, can you speak on how the PO is linked to the vendor? Yes, so for the purchase order, at least on the asset management side, there's a couple of different ways, I guess. One is depending on your vendor, they might have, there might be an integration out there that already exists with um, an integration to ServiceNow. So for example, some popular procurement ones are uh, Coupa, or if somebody is a CDW, there's also that kind of integration. And then if not, um, because ServiceNow does have an open API, you are, uh, there are, there's document documentation on how to integrate with other third-party vendors. Um, oftentimes, right, our customers choose to still do the actual PO process outside of ServiceNow, which is fine. The PO within ServiceNow then just acts as a shell so that there's something to tie all these assets to, and then you can at least match the two purchase orders. I'm just going to chat the question. It says, somebody asked, do we have similar to this in Rome Ham Pro? Right. So um, for Rome, the, I guess the UI that I showed today, that is available on San Diego. And then I know that the asset reclamation workflow was also part of San Diego, but I believe that you can still have the workflow in Rome, of course, um, right? I'm going to plug San Diego a little bit here, just because we had a massive overhaul on the UI, especially for hardware asset management, that new hardware asset workspace. Uh, the product team really worked on, worked on creating it with the hardware asset manager in mind. But yes, the flow that's running behind, you would still have access to that. Okay, uh, let's see. How much of the onboarding, offboarding automation workflows is slash are possible if you have HAM Pro and not HRCM, right? So I guess, Claire, do you wanna to talk to, if they don't have HRCM, what they can expect? Yes, so everything that we showed today was included with employee um, onboarding and transitions, which is a separate SKU. Uh, you do not need to have the, um, our HR service delivery product for that. Um, so everything we had shown today was within that scope of EOT. Thank you. All right, uh, let me hop back to the chat. Somebody says integration of POs from Microsoft D365 confirmed. Uh, I guess I'm not sure if that's confirmed. <laughs> um, let, I don't know, Mika, can you try to find some documentation on that one? Yeah, in terms of the question in regards to POs from Microsoft D3, D365, um, can I get a little bit more clarification on whether we are looking for a Microsoft integration? Okay, um, I guess as Chandrika maybe types that into the chat, I'll take this one. It's how is PO linked with contracts slash requests slash tasks, right? So um, as long as there's a mutual field where whether there is, uh, whether there already is one or there isn't. So for example, requests and POs would be linked, contracts and POs, I'm not too sure. And then the tasks would be linked to the requests. But either way, as long as there's some mutual field or some kind of drilling down function, or you can always configure a field on a contract record, for example, that has a space for a PO number, then you can have those be related lists every time you pull up a PO record, for example. So you can have a PO record with related lists of contrast requests and tasks tied to it, or any other kind of combination that I just mentioned. Okay. Chandrika wanted to avoid entering purchase orders in two systems, All right? So we're going to track that down for you. And if we don't get to it live today, we can definitely follow up. D365 will be the main tool for our account and service now is for IT. Got it. Right. Um, are there any other questions? Currently the Q&A is empty. Oh, it says, will you clarify again what systems you need for this life cycle? We have Ham and Sam, what is the list of licenses? you need for this to work, right? So everything that I showed on my portion, that's Ham and Sam. 
Um, Claire, for yours, what kind of licensing would you need? Yes. So everything that I showed today was enterprise enterprise onboarding and transitions at that SKU. Um, that does include employee center, which I showed from the manager's perspective. So just EOT um, from the employee workflow side. Thank you. And if we, we can get follow-up um, to about that information, if you were to contact uh, your sales reps. Any other questions? I guess, Claire, for you then, are there any? Oh, I see somebody. We have a Ham Pro and Sam Pro, but in Rome, right? Uh, all the workflows should still be available in him as well as Sam for Rome. And I believe I can find this, but I think that there is documentation out there on um, what it looks like to go from Rome to San Diego and maybe uh, what the transition looks like and what the differences are that we can send out. Um, but I was going to say, oh, so if you, oh, so if you only have Ham and Sam, would you kick off the offboarding tasks by going to the asset life cycle of the catalog. Right, that's correct. So if you only had Ham and Sam, um, instead of uh, you know what Claire earlier showed, you would essentially, that asset, se asset life cycle section of the catalog, that's the screen that I showed you when I was showing the back end of the reclaim asset. I just didn't start from the service catalog portion, but you drill, you drill down and then you can find something that's called reclaim asset. All right. Uh, so Robin asks, how is auto provisioning done? Um, I'm assuming that you're talking about auto provisioning for the software licenses. Is that true? Yes. Okay, great. Right. So the auto provisioning, or I guess maybe kind of like allocations would be um, earlier, there was a screen I was on where I was requesting the allocations as well as a piece of hardware for everybody. So that would that is just live that tells me how many licenses are available. And then once I assign it to, in my example, it was Susan, um, right? Like that takes away one allocation from the pool of available ones. I did show it manually, but you're able to do it or you're able to automate that where you don't have to do each one of the drop downs that I did. Um, is that what you were asking? Right. So let's see. Is there a standard way of integrating with third party supplies? to provision and deprovision licenses. I'm thinking if you have 300 of software, that is a lot of work, right? So for the SaaS integration uh, or the SaaS deprovisioning piece, we have a running list of direct integrations with SaaS vendors and those you can automate deprovisioning. As for reclaiming some of those licenses, uh, you can do it if you're or one of the ways that you can do it is if your organization is leveraging something like an SCCM, you can have the workflow kick off in service now to tell SCCM to go and reclaim that license from those machines. Um, let me, in the meantime, look for that list of uh, SaaS integrations. Um, all right, so I did not answer on the question. No, are we able to set up integration with a vendor to provision a subscription license, right? So yes, so provisioning uh, can also be done, at least for the SaaS piece. I know that some vendors will allow it. Um, for your, for some of the other vendors, I guess it would have to see, well, one, if there's an existing integration either built, us by, built out by us or the vendor or a third party or um, if they have an open API and then you have the resources, you can definitely set up an integration between us and that vendor. All right. Let's see, any other questions? Mm 
-hmm. Welcome. Looks like Mika is giving is entering that uh, deprovisioning license question. Is there anything else? Let's see. And if you want to uh, mm -hmm. answer that question over chat, I'm still looking for a documentation to supply. Okay. But I can also yeah. enter I that in individually. Yes, yeah, no worries. Um, in the meantime, I guess we can also broaden it out if there's any questions about ITAM or. Uh, employee workflows in general, we do have both Claren and I on. Okay, there's no questions yet. Uh, so it's, we still have about 12 minutes. I guess we can stay on for another, you know, five minutes or so. Oh, we do a question. So for this demo, you had the HRSD and on, on offboarding applications, which are fee-based along with HAM and SAM, right? So for my portion, I was showing both HAM professional and SAM professional, uh, which are additional products. And then for Claire's side, do you want to talk to yours? Yes. Yeah, so for my side, I demoed um, just employee on um, enterprise onboarding and transitions. So both of them are working together. And yes, they are fee-based. And we can send that to um, in a follow-up email. Mm -hmm. Or if you're interested, you know, please feel free to reach out to your account representatives. They should be able to connect you to us or the other appropriate parties. Okay, so let's say we can give it another two minutes and then if nothing comes in, then you know, for those of you who are still on, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this is helpful. And then be sure to check out the ServiceNow website as well as reach out to your account representatives um, if you have any follow-up questions. And again, the recording as well as the deck will be sent out or will be made available to you shortly after the webinar. Thank you all.
All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I don't see any more questions, so um, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Thanks for joining.